This podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with a mental health professional. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast by your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. And guess what, y'all? We have somebody back who, I'm going to say in, by popular demand. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. We, yes, we have our brother back, Stephen Dixon. Hey. Thanks for having me. Yes. Where's that clap? Yeah, this is the I thought y'all had to say We I don't have, we can't afford that. Y'all not so yet? All right, all right, so we had the applause come in. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you, my brother, for joining me again. Thanks for having me. So we are here to do a new series. And this is in all seriousness. Oh, wait, hold on, y'all. Before, yeah, we got to take care of business. Before we can move any further, what I need you guys to do is to hit that subscribe button, the like button, and to share the episode. Share, share, share. Because this is going to be some good life changing stuff. Some great material. Okay. So um, the reason why I asked you back, Stephen is because the last podcast that we did together, um, we kind of talked about your book. And this was a book that you wrote some years ago, about how long ago? Oh, it's been about 12, 13 years. That's right, about 12, 13 years ago. And you have evolved Mm. since you've written that book. I have. Absolutely. However, you haven't lost touch with reality, right? That's right. And the struggle that a lot of men go through. Yeah. Now, I want to go deeper. Because I want to go, <laughs> no, I want to go deeper, so that we can, you know, understand the root of the why, so that we can create change. Yes, our men need us. Yes, and the name. This is this is the thing, right? The name of your book was "Men Don't Heal, We Help." Right. Yeah. And it was about the emotional instability of men. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So before we talk about where you are now, mm-hmm. if you want to do it like a little recap on that, so yeah. they can hear your voice. Hear your beautiful voice. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Thanks for the compliments. Uh, appreciate your audience and your folks. Definitely su- subscribe. That uh, I think it's a wonderful podcast. What you're doing is amazing. Um, men Don't Heal, We Hold was about recognizing that as a man, I hadn't really gotten in touch with my own feelings and emotions, leading to the subtitle, a book about the emotional instability of men. Mm -hmm. Um, Just not even knowing that I had emotions. I come up as football player, basketball player, uh, uh, home of a single mother, where I had to grow as a man and be responsible for younger siblings. Um, So I didn't get to have that opportunity to figure out my feelings as a young man. Mm -hmm. Um, And I didn't know that I had to figure them out as an older man. Mm -hmm. And so Men Don't Heal We Hope was about learning that, hey, when we're hurting Mm -hmm. as as an average man, when we're hurting, we believe that we feel that hurt with another woman. Mm -hmm. The next woman, this woman may have hurt me or I may have hurt her, but the next woman is going to make that better. Mm -hmm. There was nothing wrong with me. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. The next woman is going to fix that and going to make that other woman feel like she made a mistake. She's going to make me feel better about me mm. instead of learning what I'm missing or what I'm needing mm. or my goals, my ambitions. Do I just need encouragement? Do I just need support? Mm. Do I need love? Mm. Just not even acknowledging those things exist. Everything was external. Everything was physical. Yeah. Right? Like hurt is not internal. Hurt is external. Oh. That's what we thought. That's what a lot of men still think. I know. So give me an example of that. That's so good. That's mm-hmm. so good. With hurt being external. Yeah. Yeah. Hurt being external, meaning like, like if we were, when I remember being young yeah. and I would get hurt playing football and my coach would say, are you injured or are you hurt? Mm. Injured meaning I can't continue to go on. Hurt means it's going to be uncomfortable. And so that was the first time I was really ever even acknowledged pain, you know? But even then, it was more of him asking me to continue to play. He wasn't really asking me if I needed to come out. 
it was more like he's putting the onus on me to say, hey, coach, I can still go. Wow. That's and right. so since I can still go, I since that my, that's my first experience with emotions, I applied that to the rest of my life. Mm. So when I'm walking around, I'm having a debate, discussion with my girl. Mm -hmm. Am I angry? Mm -hmm. I'm not really looking at, is this a real problem? This is not a real problem. This is something I just, I, I just need to push through. Ooh. And so I would apply that physical hurt to the same internal hurt. And that was where we got broken. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And guess what? What I'm, I'm also going to show you as a relationship coach, because that's the thing. Let me also, I want to reintroduce you. But as a relationship coach, I'm a psychotherapist. So we work with people. We inspire people. We help people to live their best lives. But I'm going to challenge you. And on this, you're going to challenge me too. Okay. That's good. As a, as a one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. There we go. But I'm going to challenge you um, by saying it happened even before then. Mm. Yeah. It happened before then. However, the coach reinforced it. Yes. Got me? Mm -hmm. So he reinforced it as in, in a male, you know, male to male situation. Like he reinforced that you can't feel anything. You're like, there's only two emotions that you can feel. And one of them is, is get up and go home. Mm -hmm. Or the other one is pull your stuff together and get back on his feet. Absolutely. <laughs> push Absolutely. through, push through, screw your feelings. Right. What is that? Right. Oh, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Because there's actually, you know, men walk around. Uh, unbeknownst to you guys yes. with it's a depressive state yes yeah it's a normative male depression mm. yeah and it comes from being learned it comes from society teaching you all men boys and men mm -hmm. that you can't have feelings absolutely yeah um society has taught us that um and we not only is society feeding us that with the example I gave my coach, but also we're taught that mm. because even I say we're a 12 year old boy. I'm with my 12 year old friends. I fall down. My 12 year old friends are like, get up. And then if I don't get up, they laugh because we are all taught in community that we're tough Ooh. and we cannot have hurt. So if I'm not getting it at home where I'm saying someone's saying to me, my mother, my father, and I didn't know my father. I didn't have my father in my life. Mm. Ever. I've never had my father. Um, but, but, and my mother really wearing that, that, that father and mother role at the same time while I'm raising three kids. Yes. So she didn't have the time to sit with me and confirm my emotions mm -hmm. and teach me how to feel about my emotions. Mm -hmm. And actually we have to take our men and we got to talk through emotions with them and say, these things are okay. It's okay to express yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel hurt, to feel pain, to feel disappointment to feel frustrated, things like that. And so if we're not taught it at home and then we don't learn it with our friends and then society and community teach us that you just gotta be tough. Mm. Emotion is tough, just being tough. So you can't be hurt. You have to just push through everything. Mm. Mm. No matter what, it could be an interaction on the way home from school or you had a misunderstanding with somebody at the grocery store again, 12 years old. That's right. It doesn't matter. Mm. Push through, don't be hurt. Mm. That's so good. That's so, so good. That's so good. It's so unhealthy. <laughs> but yes. when I'm saying it's so good, it's so good that you're saying that now. Because I do believe that that's what a lot of men feel. And it's just, you know, like you said, it's, or it's perpetuated in all situations, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the, so, the socially acceptable way for men to express anything that he feels mm -hmm. not even knowing that he feels because he shut his feelings down yes. because society told him to i yes. mean even his mother told him to yeah. i mean even if he was in a relationship with his father if he was his father told him to right yeah. you don't just cry so you know that's perpetuated and so now the socially acceptable way to express anything that i'm feeling that i don't like is usually anger absolutely Anger is accepted. It's accepted. We really can stop right there and say, <laughs> as a black man, as a young black man, come on. Ain't, when you're angry, that's accepted. Ooh. Like, oh, okay, you're angry. Yeah. You're angry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Right, and everything was angry, right? Everything. Nothing is hurt. Mm. Nothing is pain. Ooh. Nothing is discomfort. Nothing yes. is frustration. Everything yeah. is angry. Nothing Every is nothing is sad. Nothing is sad. Right? Nothing. nothing is minimized. Nothing is I'm overlooked. 
right? Yes. Nothing. Yeah, like, yeah, right. I don't care if you're happy. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, even yeah. care about that, about Ooh. you being happy. Oh, Lord you know, have mercy. And, and, and really, when I was about 23, I went to a counselor for the first time. Okay. And I remember the counselor asking me, how do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> and I talked about this. I've talked about this previously, I think, on a podcast. Yeah, you sure did. I and want just, you to go there. Get, get, just do it again. Just, ready, just say it, it over and over and over and, again. And I'm going to tell you why, but go ahead. Go yeah. there. This is good. She, she said to me, how do you feel? Uh-huh. And I said, I'm hungry. I missed lunch. And she's like, no, no, no. How do you feel? And I was like, I, I was up late. I didn't get to sleep. She's like, no, how do you feel? And I was like, I just told you how I feel. I was hungry and sleepy. Oh, I'm tired. That's, that's all three. That's three. That's the three emotions. Mm. Are those three emotions? Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought hungry, <laughs> sleepy, and tired was an emotion. No, they're physical responses <laughs> to your needs. I hadn't even tapped in like that. But you didn't know how to, right? Never, never been introduced to actually, like, feeling was tired. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's the Lord. only time I got asked how I really how I felt was when I'm ready to go play the game. Mm. Really, are you ready to play the game? That's, mm. that's how you feel. Mm. And so I believed until I was the age of 23, 25, so around there, that hungry was an emotion. And, I was, and, I, and I'm not talking about believing from a mental space. I got so you. The audience doesn't get that. No, no, no. It wasn't an intellectual good. problem. Yes, yes. It was just that I never touched into or or, or was led to say, uh-huh. no, how are you How are you spiritual? Come on now. Right? How, how, how are you feeling? Like, uh, uh, are you upset? Yes. Are you, are you ready? Are you mentally in the right space? Yes. Are yes. you ready to compete in a mental space? Not mm-hmm. just physically. Mm-hmm. And, and as a man, we're always asked how we are physically. Yeah. Or not emotionally, mentally, spiritually, those types of things. And so it was just a breakthrough in that moment for me to say, oh, someone's, and I was married at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, someone's asking me how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I really like had to take a step back wow. to start that process of saying, what do I need? What do I need out of, out of my God? What do I need for mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. What do I want? What are my desires? Mm-hmm. What do I need to ask my wife? Mm. What do I want out of life? Mm. Things like that. I, for the first time, I started asking myself questions. So I was going through life just basically being active. Lord, just going. Mercy. Yes. Not feeling anything. Like, oh, I'm supposed to go to college. Okay, I'm going to go to college. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on football scholarship. Play football. Football practice. Okay, I, I go. Yeah. You know, oh, me and girl, we have a fight. Uh, I, what, we break up. Yeah. Oh, at the college, we're supposed to just get married. That's what we're supposed to do. Like, I'm just doing and being active and not feeling oh that's that's so good and so let me tell you what that leads to my brother what that leads to is finding happiness which is fleeting and coping skills Mm -hmm. right but maladaptive coping skills Mm -hmm. you feel me so coping skills such as so if i'm just moving through life as a robot without feeling without connection then i mean why can't i hope Right. right, because if I'm not feeling anything, but I'm, I'm, I feel, I really feel discontent. But it just is itchy. I don't know. So mm, society tells me that it's acceptable to uh, let me have fun with her. Yep. Oh, let me see, she look fun. Oh, let me see, she look fun. But yet still do what society says do. So that's either have a girlfriend or not, or a wife or not. But you know, this is what I'm taught, and this is what I've seen too. Yes. I've heard it in ra- on on TV, on radio, in songs. This is what you're supposed to have a side chick, yes. a, a main chick. You know, so this is normal. Like, oh, this is the thing. Yeah, I'm doing so what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, I don't. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So when somebody gets mad at me or charges me up or calls me bad, it's like what? I'm th- like, that's your problem right. because you didn't do this to make me happy. Or you didn't do, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's projecting onto you when really going back to what you're saying, it was really about you not even yes. knowing how to access your feeling to know what you really wanted. And in addition to that, not just side chicks or extra relationships with women, but alcohol, yes. drugs, pornography, right? Yes. This is where men learn these coping skills. Yes. When they don't know how to feel. We have no idea how to feel. And the coping skills, that is really it, right? Like, yes. like, 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 like. They maladaptive of, coping skills. Right. But they coping skills. Instead of sitting on the couch with you. Come on now. And working through and walking through and unpacking, unpeeling all of that, how we feel. Yes. 
we just were taught to just go get another woman. Yes. Don't worry about how you feel. Don't do not do that. Just go get another woman and she's going to make you feel good for that moment. Oh, Come on. And then you're confused and thinking that that solved the problem. Yeah. Until she mess up or Until get on your nerve up. or call you out on something, right? Yeah, she wanted me to just be with her. Yeah, come on. You know, no, yeah. I, you just solved how I felt on that day. Yes, that's right. And, and, and really, I can't understand at that moment. I, I'll never forget the first time I really felt love mm. was when, oh, I bet a lot of people feel this too. Like when my wife, before we got married, mm -hmm. one day she was like, what are we doing? And I was like, we chill out. We, we're having great sex mm -hmm. and we, we have fun. And she was like, no, what are we doing? Like, where are we going? What are we, are, is this serious? Is this going to lead to marriage, family, kids, houses, wealth building, things like that? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, we chilling. Like, what we doing what we're supposed to be doing? And that woman got up and left. What do you mean she got up and left? She just got up and vamoose, like just disappeared. <laughs> and I sit there for a second in my whole masculinity uh -huh. oh come on masculinity she can leave <laughs> i did that for about a minute and a half before it, something in my chest ooh, ooh. what happened and it wasn't physical oh ooh, ooh, ooh. it was percolating yeah it was <laughs> it's about 90 seconds she had a long walk out of the restaurant into the you know and then it was just like just getting a little deeper uh -huh. and now that she's out of sight i'm like I love her. Oh, come on now. I love her. <laughs> I think that's what that is. I saw it on TV once. <laughs> but I thought they were just reading from a script. I didn't think they really had like, I, I didn't know because I've been, of course, 23 years old. Of course, I've told a lot of women I love them. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to. Oh, 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 that's good. They, they, she oh, that's she good. loved me. That was another thing that you were supposed to do. Right. Ooh. Yes, I love you too. Ooh, yes. So Can we continue? Yes. That's good. That's good. Yes, I love you too. Yes. Okay. And so, yeah. But then to actually re like have it resonate yes. in me, in my spirit, uh -huh. and feel like when she left, at first being, she can go, we're going to get her to come over here and take her spot anyway. It's no big deal. Ooh. Um. But then as, as she gets out of view uh -huh. and I kind of feel it in my spirit and my soul and my heart. And I'm like, wait a minute, something's different oh. with her leaving. Because ordinarily when a woman leaves, I don't care. But this one was different. This one was different. I, I, I think I love her. Mm. And so I just sprung out of my seat and I ran behind that woman. And I was like, wait a minute, woman. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Give me a minute. Something's different with me. I don't, just hold on. <laughs> Just wait. Just give me a minute. I don't know what's going on, but something is not right. And I stretched, and it's not physical. So, you love me. I love you. I know I said it before. We've been saying it for a while. Oh, yeah, because it was cute. It was easy. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what you do. Checking boxes. Right. I, I love you. you, too. Yes, yeah, love. Yeah. Ooh, gifts. And, oh, it's our anniversary. Oh. You know, I, we've been dating a year or two years. It's our anniversary. Yeah, oh, it's, you know, some women, you know, oh, we keep yeah. up with them dates. Yeah, yeah our first date, deal. anniversary. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, let's do all that sentimental stuff. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Wait. Mm. I love it. Mm. And it wasn't till she left. That I was like, oh, that feeling is love. How do women get there? How do we see? I think it is women mm -hmm. get to see it. Remember, I said I, I grew up. I didn't grow up with a man, a male figure. Yes. Which again is the greatest tragedy to men. Yes. Is to not have witnessed a man love a woman when you're a boy. Mm -hmm. So I never saw my mother being loved. Mm -hmm. I saw my mother fighting. Mm -hmm. I saw my mother not being loved. I saw my mother being disrespected. I saw men that I wanted to fight yeah. because of the way they treated my mother, yeah. but I didn't see her loved. Yeah. So I, if I didn't see it modeled, I didn't know what it was. I couldn't feel it. What is that? Yeah. It, it was foreign to me. So we have men leaving households Lord at 18. Mercy. Come on. Never having seen love be exhibited. Never. Have. Never having seen a man be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But women get to see that, right? Yeah. So yeah, women get to see vulnerability it, a lot more than men. But I also do believe, I believe that we all have intuition. And I think women are more intuitive, you yes. know, as mothers, you know, as nurturers, you know, than men. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you know, women think are more connected, like you said, because it's socially acceptable 
they're more connected to their heart and to feeling. So yes, I'm going to agree with you on that because you did say that before. So yeah, so when uh, a woman is interacting with a man, yeah, she already knows. She knows how she feels. Like, she already knows. There's so many women that can tell you when you first meet a man, maybe not in the first meeting, but maybe about three dates down, you know, you think to yourself as a woman, you know, because he, he resonates, his spirit resonates with me, whatever it is, even if it's dysfunctional, mm -hmm. even if it's dysfunctional, there's this resonance that I'm feeling, you know, he makes me feel, and it's usually something that they've been missing at home. But then on the other hand, it's something that they're also used to. And we can get into that another time. Mm -hmm. Our series is not about women, but but there's some resonance that they feel where they decide. Women will decide in a moment, like, yeah, he's going to be mine. My wife says she knew the moment she met me. I'm telling you. And she was like, that is my husband. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's when you know. You that's compare, when you know. If you compare the groups, like I gave the example of me being a 12-year-old boy and my 12-year-old friends, and I fall down and they laugh at me. Mm -hmm. A 12-year-old girl falls down with her friends. All the girls in unison mm -hmm. love on her mm. and tell her that I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to support you. Yeah. Then I, there's well, no not all the girls. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got some mm -hmm. haters that's probably going to laugh I'm at you. I'm glad you got hurt. <laughs> I'm glad you bust your because, deal because you because you go with the boy that I like. Okay, that's uh, what all the uh, 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 <laughs> besides her, <laughs> besides her. But no, you're right. Most of them, most, most of them. The girls. And but guess what? Not only the other girls rally around her, but if there was a teacher or an adult or something, and they were to see the little girl, right? Yes. They reinforce. Oh my gosh, get up. You okay? Did she, did she need to go to the office? Did you get a band aid? And if there were a boy. Not only would the boys laugh, yes. but a coach or a man would laugh too, right? Yep. Normally, let's just yep. say we are generally yep. speaking. And tell them what? Get up, boy. Get up. Don't you cry. You better. I know you don't look like you. You ain't cry. You can't cry. I mean, right. And that's perpetuated. Absolutely. My mother did that. My mother felt like mm -hmm. since there was no man around, Ooh. she would be tougher. On Lord me. have mercy. So when I remember times when I would do fall down hurt or something, my mother would tell me to stop crying. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she was aggressive in the moment. But I, I remember kind of feeling like, oh, mom is trying to make, she's trying to wear the, the male response. Mm. She's trying to make sure that her son is not soft. Mm. So my mother was always harder on me mm -hmm. to make sure that I can be a leader. Yeah. She created a great leader in me. Yeah. But that side of me being emotional, again, was perpetuated That's in terms right. of not not dwelling in it and, and seeing how we feel about it. like. Like and and so going from that twelve year old place, mm -hmm. and you fell down, you got hurt. So now you're in a dating relationship as mm -hmm. a young woman. You the you break up with your boyfriend. Girls again hug and love. Oh, absolutely. Boys, we break up with a girl and we just move on. Well, because all of you were taught that that's what you do. Men don't heal. We all. We men don't heal. We next. Me, that's right. That's right. That's hey family. Just stop by here for a couple of seconds. Have something for you. This right here is a go-to guide. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and to Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. This teaches you everything that you need to know to keep your mind healthy and strong. So come on now. If you want to keep your mind healthy and strong as you have joined this, a part of our movement, you've joined this mission, you got to know how to do it. So this is your go-to guide. Going to get this at awisebrown.com. In addition to that, what you'll learn in this book is there are other ways to keep your mind healthy and strong, nice and alert, and that would be aromatherapy. Family, I'm trying to tell you something. This is delicious. Oh my goodness. This is a cruelty free candle with no paraffins, no formaldehyde, and no known suspected carcinogenics. And the name of it is a slice of happiness because when you smell it, it raises the endorphins in your brain. I'm just telling you. And the dopamine, it makes you feel good. You get a burst of happiness. You can burn it or you can just Walk by and smell it. You can find this too at awisebrown.com. People are loving it. Please get it before it sells out. A slice of happiness. And then family, because you, I know you're a part of me. I'm a part of you. We're doing this together. We got hoodies now, family. All of us. We got hoodies. 
Wines by Andrea, you know, it's kind of like on that candle. But y'all, let me show you what the back says. Mental health is a lifestyle. Andrea Wise Brown. And it's a zip up hoodie. So you can zip it down, zip it up. I can't really zip it down today because it's all I have on. And then I have it in white too. You can buy it in white too. Wise by Andrea. It's the cutest thing. Mental health is a lifestyle. Come on, family. We have hoodies. So I want you to go and get your hoodie that feels so comfortable. I just love to wear them everywhere. Get your aromatherapy and then get your go-to guide. You're going to go to awisebrown.com. Click on shop. awisebrown.com shop to get your goodies. Okay. I'll see you on the other side. Right. Let me get some instant gratification. Yes. Or we go get a new car. Yes. Or we go get some new clothes. And all those. Or we go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> instant gratification. But this is what's so good, y'all. Is yes, we get it that it's normal, right? However, however, it doesn't heal you, no. and it doesn't bring you long-term happiness. No. And that's what we are here to help. Is quality of life for men specifically and long term happiness yes. because you'll never get it chasing instant gratification. Yes. You have to tap into your heart and into your feelings. Yes, when you say you said chasing instant gratification, come on, I'm just gonna say chasing something else, but go, go ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> we know how to chase, we know how to chase. <laughs> you call it instant gratification. I appreciate that, that terminology. Somebody used another word. <laughs> well, and it's and it's the same thing, right? That's, that's <laughs> Real talk. That's right. It's a better Real word. It's better. I'm just acknowledging that your verbiage was better and more appropriate for the podcast. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. And so, um, oh, another thing I wanted to kind of go back to because this really is a conversation, but this is just a snippet, y'all. This is an introduction to what it is that we are about to do because we are going to do a six week series for men specifically for men now let me tell y'all something women you can watch it too because i think that it's going to give you a bird's eye view into the male brain and into the why to some of the behavior that you may see and maybe maladaptive behavior or dysfunctional behavior but let me tell you something women i don't want you in this room i don't want you watching this if you are going to be judgmental, don't you kind of have to put your stuff to the side? Yeah, you've been hurt before. Yeah, you and we're gonna talk about that. We can make an appointment, we can talk, but this is for men, you know, because I feel like there aren't enough spaces for men to heal, right? There, there aren't enough spaces, and so you know, by the brand is mental health is a lifestyle. Well, our series this falls under the men. So health is a lifestyle, and this is a safe space for men to heal. What is great about you doing this podcast is that there's a man out there that's 22, 23, that may be in a place where he can receive it. Mm. I might not have been able to receive it when I was 23 to say, how do you feel, mm. right? Okay. Um, I, 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 I might not have been there, even, but it's going to be somebody that watches today and that was like, you know what? It's okay that I'm upset about my recent breakup. That's right. If you could just accomplish that with one man, oh, that's you so might good. be saving marriages. Come on now. Multiple marriages. Come on now. Because the earlier men can reson can have it resonate that hey, I have a broken heart. Yes. Right? Just yeah. that 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 alone is would save 10, 15 years of mm -hmm. we might not you might not be out of business and think mm -hmm. you got some psychoanalytical <laughs> and you use that whole big old word uh -huh. you start with an M. I don't know, maladaptive. I don't know what word, was it. I don't know. You have to break that. You have to put a, a the stories or something at the bottom in the comments to say when the listeners, hey, when y'all don't, when she use a word that don't nobody know what that is, just put in the comment like, hey, what is that word? Okay, and you know what? And that's one thing that I feel like what makes me stand out from many other therapists. For me personally, 
and my clients have told me this is because because you know sometimes i use french too in my sessions i ain't gonna use french here but sometimes i use french here but i try to have an approach that is easy to understand that is palatable that you want to just it's easy to take it with you you know um, I just want to add on to, so I, I agree, I concur. If I say something and you like, come on, Andrea, break that down. Type that in. Come on, Andrea, break that down. And I'm going to read the comments the next time I'm going to break that down because that's what I'm here for you, not me. Kind of me too, but you. Um, but I wanted to say not only men out here who are 23, thank God, we yes. hope that they get it, right? Yep. Okay. But men who are 33, men who are 43, Men who are fifty three, you know that some there's some mid to mid age men who also will benefit from what we are doing here because if they've lived so long not feeling and identifying feeling and not thinking that there was space for them to express their feeling and be themselves, then they are still emotionally stuck as a 23, 18 year old man. Yep, and that is no judgment and no critique. I just said it because I want, I'm trying to grab you to get you to, to let you know that this is going to be good for you too. Yeah. How, yeah. I, how it's, it's great that you're making the point to say, not just the 23 year old man, but the older man, because what happened with me was I got to a place of accomplishment mm. and success, which gave me peace. And in my peace, I started to learn how I started to learn. You might correct me on that, but, on. I, but I don't know what the correct term is. Don't worry, but just to, talk. To learn how to feel. Mm -hmm. You don't really learn how to feel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on, yeah. So, so, so but, it wasn't no, until... Let me just say this. Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. You're right, you're right. So when you come out your mama's hoo-ha, it's you and everybody else. Mm -hmm. When you come out, you go to the neonatal unit. All of those babies know how to feel. Mm -hmm. We know how to feel when mm -hmm. we come out. You got me? Mm -hmm. We little God body. So, you know, everybody has their different personalities. Some try, you know, the temperature in the room is annoying. Them. So, like, you know how to feel. You cry when I'm hungry, when I'm not, you know, I know. However, society, parents, the household, you know what I mean? The people around you, the so-called nurturers, and they doing the best that they know how to do. Doesn't mean it's right, but it's the best that they know how to do. They're the ones that teach you that your feelings, don't matter. Your feelings aren't important here. Put that up. Yes. Ah, you know how you go to a restaurant with somebody that has, has more money and you want to pull your card? That card is not necessary right. here. It's not needed. Put that up. Right. Well, so little boys learn really early that your feelings don't matter here in this okay. world. You put that up. Yes. Yeah, and so then yeah. it's perpetuated. And then it bleeds not only into relationships, and I need y'all to get this. It bleeds into men's parenting. Yes. 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 So then it's further per it's 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 further uh, perpetuated because if I feel like being a man or being masculine is not having feelings, if I have a son, I'm going to teach him to do the same thing. You understand what I'm yep. saying? It's perpetuated. Yes, and then, okay, if I don't have feelings because I put them somewhere, how am I going to parent my daughter as a man? How am I going to identify with what it is that she's feeling? How am I going to sit there and hear and not dismiss maybe some of her feelings, not maliciously, you understand, not intentionally, but just because I don't understand and I can't connect to that. Because once I put my feelings to the side, and I told you, young men and boys are walking around with this normative it's this maladaptive depression yeah yeah um, anytime you have to put your feelings in a box and not feel yes and you're looking at the world it shows up a lot as anger but then you're taught that the only thing that you could show is stoicism you know uh this other type of masculinity you know be strong and achieve in the workplace like yeah like that's replaced with feelings yeah. and then you grow up and you're repressing, 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 repressing. So now you're walking through the world, depressed, not even knowing that you're depressed, and then angry yep. and ready to pop. Yep. And really, you hurt. You really hurt. You're angry, but you you hurt. Or <clears throat> insecurity. Insecure. Um, you hurt. You dissatisfied. There's yep. so many feelings. But yeah, talk about insecurity. Yeah. Um. I'm blown away. 
because uh insecurity is 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 a new word to me you know like in terms of just being in touch with it and fully understanding it uh -huh. um insecurity early on was you know was about somebody that's off or mm -hmm. you know um they're insecure they 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 have a problem mm -hmm. they they're just different oh okay instead of knowing that it's deep seated mm -hmm. um and it's something really the normal, the normal insecure person doesn't want anyone to know that they have this insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really, you learn so much. I actually want to go back to how you were talking about when you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. Like all men should just be given a daughter. Like Ooh. my emotional growth has grown a thousand times because I have a daughter. Ooh, and I remember when my daughter was seven uh -huh. and we were having a conversation about something. And she started crying. And I was like, why are you crying? And my seven-year-old daughter, she's eight now. But my seven-year-old daughter said to me, she said, Daddy, I can't control it. I'm upset. And that really knocked me out of my feet. I was like, whoa, like, like, really? Like that, like, she was that in touch with her emotions at seven. Where, like you said, some men that's 33, 43, 53 would fight it and hold it and, and say, I can't cry. I can't feel. I can't express. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how that insecurity kind of develops when you when you really want to share something with yes, someone, yes. but you feel that you have to hold it and block it. Yes. My seven year old daughter, like, I'm not holding it in, daddy. I'm crying because you told me to put my shoes away mm -hmm. and I ain't like your tone. Mm -hmm. Something simple and easy. I was like, I didn't even, I didn't even discipline you. I didn't punish you. And she was like, I don't like your tone and it hurt. Ooh, it was your voice. Just and you your know, voice. And you know what the feeling was? I'm assuming I've never met her, mm -hmm. but she didn't want to disappoint you. Yes. yes. So the fact that she felt like you were disappointed, she wanted to be better and it hurt her feelings that she felt like you were And, and she can go from, from expressing herself and expressing that she didn't want to disappoint me. Yes. She can connect all those dots where men are struggling with. Absolutely. We never connect any dot all the way back to how it originated mm -hmm. or what to do about it. Oh, that's so good. And it's because it was shut off as a child. There was no space for that, right? Yes. You just into it. I mean, you are also clear now. So you would also yes. do that with your son. Yes. But let's just say another man in a situation or before you had this clarity, you'd give her space to hear that and have the aha. But if it were your son, and he was sitting there crying because you told him, you'd be like, boy, if you don't. Get up. And yes, I struggle with it still as a man with a boy. Oh, that's um, so good. Right. I still, I still, every time something happens with my son where I feel like maybe he should be emotional, I'm always trying to juggle and bounce. Like, am I being tough or am I? Because I don't want him to be like me. That's difficult for men to say. Mm. That's, that's a humility statement. Like, I don't want him to be like me emotionally Come on. when he is a young adult. I, I want him to be more in sync. Maybe he'll be better at relationships and marriage and parenting because he's more free to be emotional. And that's the balance of man and woman. So sometimes my wife, I feel like is pulling them to be too emotional, mm -hmm. but then sometimes I'm pulling them to be too tough. Mm -hmm. And my, my prayer to God is that it balances out because yeah. there's no perfect way to do it. It's, right? And it's no perfect way and no perfect people. And so we right. were all had missteps forever, even after doing this, right? Yes. But it's really about doing the work. And let me tell you where the answer is. It's in your awareness. Yes. The fact that you are aware of what your influence and what he's going through and what your wife's doing and her, the awareness and the yes. conversation and communication between the two of you, you're going to get it right. Yes, like uh, he had a little girlfriend. He broke up with his little girlfriend. Okay. My initial response was, you have 72, 73 more girlfriends, <laughs> right? 80, 85. Like, I mean, I mean this year, like, what do you, but my wife was like, wait a minute. He seems he's upset. And so then it kicks in. Oh, oh, wait, don't be like the other dude. Sit down, <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> talk to him, let him know, you know, let him talk and express and just ask open-ended questions. Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What do you need? Yeah. Uh, what did you learn? Yeah. You know, just start going through that process of having him be in tap, in tap with what he needs or what he needs to say mm -hmm. instead of me talking at him about how to feel. 
And that's the mistake that men are making today. Mm. Is they're just telling their boys how to feel. Oh, that's so Instead good. of allowing them to explore their feelings. Oh, that's so good. Yes. Yeah, because then that's true to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Let them explore. Let them yes. know how do you feel. That's good. How the, and well, what? Well, and balancing it. Like, and I can't even, I'll be good mm-hmm. for a couple, 10, 15 minutes. And then I slide back over to, man, you had 17 girlfriends. <laughs> You're going to be all right. <laughs> Don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? It's so- but, but look, though, no, but I like it, Stephen, because listen, but you can do both, right? You can do both. So you can say, okay, son, I know that you don't get this right now, right? You don't see this, but I already know you're strong, you're smart, you yes. know what I'm saying? All yes. those things. And so you are, you're going to have many girlfriends. Yes. However, however, right now, yes. how are you feeling? Yes, how are you feeling? Come on now. And just take your time. Take your time. Just walk yes. forward. How upset are you? Come Do you on. you feel like you could have done something different? There you go. Do you feel like there was a misunderstanding yes. or miscommunication? Yes. You know, um, just those things of walking through and talking and using words instead of just like, you'll be fine. Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, I think that that is a great um, introduction to what it is that we are going to be doing. Because the name of our series is Uh-oh. right. Drum roll, some kind of <laughs> right. But it's I'm hungry, mm. and where we get that from? You. Oh, <laughs> because remember, like you just said here, you reiterated that when we had our first talk, when you went to the therapist, and she said, "How do you feel?" Oh, and you're that's re- where you got it from. I totally missed that. <laughs> I totally missed see that. See what the difference between a woman you. and a man. You. you see this? <laughs> I still didn't get it until right here. I was like, all right, that's what Andre won't talk about. <laughs> Look, and you even said it again right here. You go, and so you tell the story again about the yes. therapist, and I'm hungry, mm-hmm. right? Because I wanted a sandwich, but you were really hungry for something else. Yes. And there are so many men out there who are hungry, hungry for something else. You already ate. You already ate. You already ate. Tell them again they already ate. (laughs) It's not food no more. It's not food. And it's time. Like, it is time for change. And God has really called me to do this. Like, I feel it. And guess what? God didn't call me to do it by myself. He said, ask Stephen to do this with you because he's the guy. He the one. And so. I did not know that's where you got it. I'm sitting there tripping like. I just like, oh, that's to be a cool title, Andrea. I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> and Y'all, and this is so funny. Look, and I actually sent him an email when I asked you to come on. Uh, and I go, okay, listen, we're going to do this series for men. We're going to empower men because if we empower men, we empower their relationships. We empower their relationships with their children, with their family, you know, with their romantic relationships. Like, this is it. Like, men need it, and the time is now. And you were like, yes. And I was like, and the the, the, the name of it is I'm Hungry, the, instabi- the Emotional Instability of Men. And I took that from your book, right? We, because that's the thing, right? Men don't heal, we hope. Well, no, now it's time to heal. Yes. yes, they can heal. And you said that at the end of the podcast, and I help men heal all the time, and we're going to do it together. So that's yes. where I'm hungry came from. I'm blown away, Sydney. I, I ain't going to go to at all. <laughs> that's okay. But listen, then we're going to say this, and we're going to end it. So now we're going to talk about our series is going to be what? I'm hungry for love. Go deep. I'm hungry for happiness, and we gotta go deep. I'm hungry for financial stability or finances, right? Yes. Yes. And we're gonna go deep. Yes. And then we are going to explore the emotional instability of men. Yes. Yeah. Is and it other? I'm hungry. Come on. Uh, spirituality. There you go. And I'm hungry for spirituality. Uh, and then learning how they're different. Mm-hmm. Right. Those are different. Different. <sighs> Needs, 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 right, needs. right, and yeah. so, so what we're gonna do is, mm-hmm. I'm hungry, and I'm not just hungry for food. Yes. And I, when I'm hungry for food, I solve that problem with food. Yes. But when I'm hungry for love, come on, what am I gonna do? Oh, well, we're gonna teach you, right? We're gonna teach you. When I'm hungry for spirituality, come on. What am I? That's different. Wait. When am I hungry? Hungry for financial success? That's different. These things are different. So teaching men 
where are you, right? Mm-hmm. Wait, maybe it's one episode that a man is like, oh, okay, I got that covered. But this one I need. I need I need my be in touch with my spirituality. I need to be in touch with my 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 oh one I I'm hungry for sex. Oh, that was good. That's right. Right. Yes. Talking a bit about what what you should be doing to if you're married, single, what are you doing? How do you not get trapped in some pornography or oh, something that's like so that? Good. Like those things that you're going to go through as men. Yeah. And just saying to yourself, "Hey, when you say to yourself, I'm missing something or yes. I'm hungry, yeah. don't just think it's food, don't just think it's what Yes. Oh, that's so good, right? Yeah, because we're going to address those, remember, coping strategies that you learn, maladaptive, maladaptive, right? COVID, dysfunctional. Just, dysfunctional? Oh, is dysfunctional good? Okay, like, okay, dysfunctional it's not, good. So but we like new words. Educate us, but say what the word means. <laughs> You got people turn it off the podcast because they can't understand the terminology. Okay. Maladaptive. Well, okay, but everybody knows what dysfunctional is, yes. right? When something's dysfunctional. So we're we're going to curb. No, dis- we want you to use the big words, but tell us Just what they mean. Okay, so, so we can learn. So you know what I'll have? I'll have little I'm gonna have little uh I'm gonna have them to edit little definitions when I say Ooh, little words. Yes. Cause that's slide it in. <laughs> so that you got me. That's right, because I want you to get me. Somebody gonna appreciate but, it. Right. Well, you, and you know why I don't want to say bad and good and bad and good because things just are. You know what I'm saying? And I understand in the world there is some bad and good. But I, I think that when you do that and you label that and then a person does that, then they start to feel like they're bad. And you don't grow from feeling like you're a bad person or you do bad. You just don't grow from that because shame comes upon you and shame binds you. So we're just talking about behaviors and we're talking about behaviors that are not adaptive. They are not healthy. So they're maladaptive behaviors. And that's what we're curving, maladaptive coping skills. So instead of talking about our feelings and processing, because we're going to teach you how to do those things and to communicate and to feel and to let you know that it is okay, my brother, to feel. And you have to be around people, people who create the space for you to feel and to be honest about your feelings. And I know for some of you right now, you think, oh, you got that thing in your stomach. My woman ain't going to let me, my mother or my, you know, they, I can't feel my friend. We're going to teach you because guess what? Maybe you need to widen the gap and creating, bringing some more people. Mm-hmm. Got me who are healthy, who can, who, who give you the space. Get the maladaptive people out your, out your life. <laughs> Get them out of your life. They're maladaptive. <laughs> right now in the comments, just write down which one of your friends are maladaptive. <laughs> And get them out of your life right now. That's why we got to learn new words. Then we can use them. You know how we do. We learn one word. You just say the one time. I'm tell them every day this week, I'm going to tell somebody they're maladaptive. And act like I've known that word my whole life. You know how we do. Oh, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> okay, so I'm hoping that you come back, mid. And remember, women, if you come into this room, this is a safe space for men. Close your mouth. Because this is not about you. However, however, it's going to affect you long term in a positive way. Yeah. It will affect you, affect you, sorry, positively for the long term. But you have to close your mouth. You want to make an appointment with me? Make the appointment with me. We can work through your stuff. And men, this is not a dump on you and say all women are right. Because they're not. They have to heal too. But for me, I feel like there's enough brunches. There's enough women's lunches. There's enough empowerment women's weekends out there. Who's going to help the men? And not just a whole bunch of men that get together and just pound and a speaker. And then, you know, like, no, I, I want to do some work. And, uh, and yeah, I want to do it with you. Let's do it. For you. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, y'all. So we want to see you back here. Please, it is 2024, and we want to see you back here every week for the next six weeks. So this is the introduction, and then we have six sessions after that, six podcasts after that, and they are just for men. It is a safe space for men to heal. Please join us again on the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown, and Mr. Stephen James Dixon. Yes, Stephen James Dixon. All right, my brother.